All right. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Are you looking to expand your network, gain momentum in your business, and be around your tribe of designers or decorators or architects? If you answered yes, then go check out the Collective Workspace. They offer a range of private office suites, flex workspaces, boardroom rentals, and many more books, along with a trade-only design resource library. Oh, and did I mention a boutique gym? Their flagship space is located in the heart of Toronto. I am here right now in the design district with a second location opening up this fall in Mississauga. Go check them out at thecollectiveto.com or go on Instagram at The Collective Workspace, your tour, or take advantage of their free three-day pass. Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Today, I just wanted to hop on and talk a little bit about time, no, not time management, not even project management, managing your project timeline. There it is. That's what it is. Because I've had a lot of questions lately about this in our coaching community. We have um, the Designers Room, which is a monthly coaching group. We do two calls a month, two Zoom calls, and that's come up a few times there, as well as in the Designer Meetup Facebook group and just on Instagram. So I thought this would be a worthwhile topic. I, you know, all I can really do is share how we do things. And if you like it, you can ad- you can adopt how we our process of how we do it, and if not, then find your own. Um, but I think it's I think now more than ever, some designers, a lot of designers, are smoking busy because of the pandemic. Everything's shut down, and everything's open, and everyone and their brother wants to renovate and move and build and decorate and make their homes more functional for their family. So when you get busy. That's when you start to notice, shoot, I'm too busy. How do I handle the work? And the question usually comes down to this. Do I take on all the projects and just hire a bunch of people to help me? Or do I stagger my pipeline? Do I slow down the flow? But then the fear in that is that while you're deferring the revenue that could come in right away. I don't have the answer of which way you should do it. That choice is very personal. If you're somebody who's always wanted to grow a business and a team, maybe you jump right on. You know, I've heard different successful business owners say different things. Um, those That really comes down to what your goals are, what your vision is for your company and for your future. But what I can tell you is there is a limit to how much you can take on with the amount of the team members or the capacity that you have, right? Without running ragged. And then all of a sudden, when you're too busy and you're spread too thin, not only is it harder to deliver great quality service to your customers, it sometimes takes a toll on your personal life. So I am now of the mindset of a little bit of a hybrid. I am trying to be more proactive with hiring and bringing on the right people knowing that the work is coming in advance of the work coming because in the past I've scrambled to bring people in when I was busy and it just never really worked out. No one got the proper training. It just didn't work. So here's what we do. We use a program called Asana. Now you you don't have to use Asana for this. In fact, you'd have to pay to get the feature that we're using. We've upgraded to the professional version. I sort of put that off for a really long time because I don't know. I just didn't want to spend more money on programs if I didn't really need it. And and in my experience, oftentimes you upgrade to a program and then you don't use the feature that you upgraded for because you're just so busy. So we're starting to use a feature in Asana, which is called Timeline. Uh, It's essentially a Gantt chart. And if you've never heard of a Gantt chart, it's spelled 
it's spelled G H A. I think is it H? Is there an H? Oh shoot, guys! I think, I think it's it's Gant, like G H A N N T or G A N N T. It's probably named after a person. Anyone who's been a project manager in any other industry knows of it, has heard of it. It was a relatively new term for me a few years ago, but I freaking love it. Essentially, it's a timeline, and it shows, let's say, you can look at a month or you can look at an overview of a year, and it shows a long bar from a start to an end date, and you can see how projects will overlap and you can start to stack them up. It's hard in a podcast to express this. Shish. Um, but it is something that is we've developed and added into our process. And it's something that we look at every Monday and when we have our status meeting. So what we do, and here's what I recommend you do. You can do this in Excel. You can do this literally with a pen and paper and maybe a few different colored highlighters. If you've taken any of my courses, you know that I'm a big fan of colorful highlighters. I like color um, not only as a designer, but I just, I think it helps the mind differentiate topics and subjects. So what we would do, our design, um, our process our, our, is structured in three phases. So, I mean, I know I talk about this a lot on the podcast. Many of you know that we follow seven steps over three phases. The first phase is the project initiation phase. The second phase is the design phase. And the third phase is called implementation. We collect different fee for each phase. What that means is we try to project the amount of time it will take for each phase given the project, right? Because every project and scope of work is slightly different. And what we will do in the Gantt chart is we'll look at a new lead and we'll say, okay, 125 Roberta Avenue, I have a consultation coming up. Um, We put the date of the consultation as like kind of like the start date, And then we color in the first phase. So how long do you think, if they decide to hire us, until they sign our contract? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? We color that in. Then after that, and if you could see my hands right now, I'm going like in a long line. I'm not looking at like a monthly calendar. I find that confusing. The idea behind a timeline or a Gantt chart is to see them stacked not on a, like a regular calendar view. You can all, I mean, if you use Asana, you can toggle between calendar view, like switch between calendar view and timeline, but the timeline Gantt chart way is for me the best way. So because surprise, surprise as a designer, I'm very visual. <laughs> so you do the intro, sorry, the intro. Gosh, what are you talking about? Well, it is the intro, but the first phase. And then I switch colors. And for us, design is always like a pink Pinky purple, I think, is the color I've selected in Asana. And and no, this podcast is not sponsored. However, I am open to having Asana sponsor my podcast. <laughs> so you heard it here first, guys. If anyone knows anyone working at Asana, tell them we would love to talk. We love their product. So it would be a really easy, easy sell. Um, sorry, I'm taking a sip of my tea. Pink purple, pinky purple is our design phase. And then we say, okay, well, one, what did I say what the address was? 192? Doesn't matter. Roberta Avenue um, is, let's say, it's a main floor gut reno. We're taking everything out. It's a brand new kitchen. It's all new furniture. And so typically a project of that scope will take us about eight weeks to design. So then, boom, we draw the fluorescent, or I mean, Asana does it for us, but you can take your highlighter and we go eight weeks for that project to get to design presentation And then revisions. We might tack on a couple extra weeks to include the revisions. Okay, great. Phase two. So that means for implementation, phase three, which is essentially the construction and the ordering, that will probably start right when that's done, assuming they don't, there's no um, downtime. We might actually sometimes give ourselves a bit of a buffer because you know how it is. Then between like actually presenting and starting, it could be a few weeks. That type of project will probably take, I don't know, four to six months, right? Start to finish, like finish, finish details. So then we plug that in. And now we can see across a year, that whole project. We do this with every project. And in real time on a weekly basis, we're updating those dates because things are constantly changing. As you know, things get delayed, things get moved forward so that you can start to see, oh shoot, in November, we're going to be like right deep into like six projects and implementation How are we going to manage that plus new design jobs? Maybe I need to hire a project manager or someone who's a site supervisor. 
hmm, or, okay, I don't want to have three new design projects at the same time because our designers are half spread, are going to be spread too thin. Some of them are going to be on a job site. And here, maybe I need to bring on a freelancer. That is how we start to look. And then, because the big question comes up is like, what do you do? How do you decide? Because you don't know if they're going to hire you. I plug it in as soon as they become a lead that wants a consultation um, because that is potential. Not if they just email us. I'm not like plugging them into our timeline. Like that's crazy because we get lots of people emailing us that never even get to consultation, right? They don't even get to a discovery call. So which is the very first step in our process. So they, um, so we plug it all in and we're looking at it on a weekly basis so that me as the business owner, it helps me in two ways. One way, it helps me understand cash flow. So I know we're going to get a big infusion of cash right at the beginning of the design phase. And then we're going to get a big infusion of cash at the beginning of implementation. So I can understand and try to maintain the cash flow. And then two, it understands the t- it helps me understand, excuse me, the team members that I will need, how to staff for the projects. And then really the third thing is that it helps me to say no or delay projects if needed. And this is a new thing for me. So before I would literally just take on anything and every project, like literally, that came my way. And I was always run ragged. Oh, it was so awful. And yes, there was money coming in, but it was never like, anyways, it just was never, it just wasn't, it wasn't ever sustainable. It wasn't easy. I couldn't predict. I didn't, when someone called me like, when can we start? I'd be like, oh, we're taking on, pro- I, don't, I don't know, I'm tomorrow, uh, next month. Like, I don't know. Now that I have the timeline, I look at it. And when someone calls in, I can say confidently, you know, we're fully booked up for consultations in November. We've got two weeks to do consults in December, and then we shut down for the holidays. Um, so we could do consultations beginning of December or January, let's say, as an example. And then from there, we're taking, you know, we have availability to start phase two for design projects in, I don't know, end of January, beginning of February, right? So I'm telling them before they've paid the consultation to meet me, when is realistic? It doesn't serve anyone for me to say, oh, let's have a consultation. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll start right away because then they feel like they're waiting. They're waiting. I would much rather have a realistic idea of timeline. And if it doesn't work as is the case of a recent consultation I just did because I didn't do a good job. Well, there was miscommunication on their end as well, not really telling us where they were at in within the project because they were already well into demo um, when I got to the consultation. But they... Um, they didn't end up hiring us because they needed us right away. And I knew I did not have the team to service it. And if I took it on, I would be so super stressed. I would have had to pull somebody on board as a freelancer that I've never worked with before and, and just trusted. And I've done it before that way. And it's just stressful and it's never worth the money to me. And I don't usually get the best design product because we're just, we just jump right in. We don't have time to really like pre-plan. So that's sort of, I don't know how, hopefully that's helpful. Um, Essentially, we use the timeline and you can do it on a piece of paper with pen and just highlight just to get a sense and put the months of the year right across the top. And then the projects are going to be down the column on the left. I don't know. One of them is X and one of them is Y. I don't remember. Don't judge me. I did drop math in grade 11 or 12. Oh, that was when we had grade 13. So guys, that's a big deal. Joke's on me, though, because you need to know math and design. but boom boom Yeah. Anyhow, uh, I've found it really helpful to get a good, and like, really, if you don't know how long it takes you to run a project, you need to do a bit of detective work and look back at some of your past projects and, and really thoroughly look. Say, huh, they hired us in September 2018, and then we didn't start the renovation until March Okay, and that project was of this size. Okay, and maybe you start jotting on a piece of paper all your past projects and just ballpark timelines that has taken in the past and then look at it and understand, was that realistic? Was there something that was out of the ordinary that affected our timeline? Um, Is that something I want to tighten up maybe? If I hired more people, do you think I could do it in less time? Because that's something I've thought about. I thought I'd love to be able to turn around design in in like eight weeks every single time, regardless of the project. But... 
it's not always realistic if you don't have the people, right? And it's that kind of constant juggle between more projects, but then you have to pay more employees, right? So are you really making more money? I don't have the answer for that today. I can One day I can share with you my financial experience in that realm because it has been a very interesting learning curve. But essentially when you can block it out on a piece of paper, and it's such a simple exercise, but no one ever told me to do that. And so I never, like I remember somebody saying to me, it was actually Marilee, who's now my operations manager, who was my client. And she just was really into business. Like, I, said, I don't know how we got to talking about business when she was my client. And she ended up helping me for a couple of years. Just, you know, we'd meet and she was always saying to me, you have to forecast. And I was like, well, that's very nice of you to say, but like, you, you don't know my business. You don't know the design industry. It's impossible to forecast because it's such a roller coaster. It's like feast or famine. You never know where the projects, you could have like six projects come all at once and then nothing for two months. And then all of a sudden you're slammed again. You've got 12 projects. Like you can't predict it, Marilee. You have no idea. Well, Yes, to a point. However, I have learned that you can actually forecast. And if you start by just understanding how long each project takes and what resources you need to service those projects, then you can better estimate and tell potential clients when you can take on their project, right? And I think people will respect that. It also shows them that you're in demand, that you know what you're doing and you've got your shit together. All right. That was just a short episode. I, th- I think, I hope it was helpful for some of you who are kind of struggling with this idea of how long does it take. Um, let me know if you want to hear more about this. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know. Do you want to understand how do I know how long a project's going to take? Or maybe you want to know and you're struggling with, I don't have phases and what does that mean? So just let me know. Send me a DM. Um, leave a comment. You can't comment on a podcast, but you can review it. If you haven't done it and it's in and it's weighing on your heart, I haven't reviewed Resilient by Design yet. Can you do it, please? And share it with your friends, please. That would be really awesome. I would love that. And again, let me know what topics you want me to share. There's so many things I'd be happy to share about in my business with you. Uh, and hopefully you got something out of today's podcast. I will see you soon.